Timby, you are a native of Houston, yes. so go ahead and get it out and do a shout out to your folks. Hey, hey, mom. <laughs> hey, hey, dad. Which camera? Yeah. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Grandma. And you graduated from Hastings High School. Yes, yes. All right. Uh, your dad, Gene Locke, is, is also a personal friend of mine. Such a super guy. He was a former city attorney for Houston. Yes. And your family is just like one of those kind of, I don't know, it's, it's like it's the all-American family in a sense. In this, yeah, I'm sure there's some crazy stuff that went on. <laughs> but, but what I love is the love of mm. your family. Um, you and your sister, Attica, who, by the way, is the author and producer for the series Empire. Sure, sure. Yep. Yep. But long okay. before Empire, she was laying down some scripts and you were acting. Oh yeah, oh yeah, no, when we were kids, we used to just at my grandmother's house, like get a cardboard, literally a cardboard box, cut out, you know, a square, uh -huh. jump in the box as if we were on TV, <laughs> put knobs on it, all of it. And you had your full, script and everything oh, going. No, no, we, were, we were full in, fall all the way in. Yeah, all right, but did you ever think that something that would become a living? Uh, yeah, I dreamed of it, you know, I wanted that. Um, and then by the time I was in high school, I knew. Yeah, I know. And then with your sister, because sometimes when we have parents who are in things like lawyers and doctors and things like that, mm. when you say, I want to be an actor. You know, if they had any feelings about it, if you did, mom and dad, they didn't say anything. Yeah. They really kind of just let us follow our hearts. And I think that that's huge. It's yeah. like the best gift they gave us. The first role you ever got. The first role? Mm -hmm. Oh, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. So <laughs> when there's something you want and you've been acting mm -hmm. all your life, mm -hmm. basically, mm -hmm. and then it actually happens and you're in that professional setting, mm -hmm. what was that like? I think the first time I was on set, I was like, oh, okay, there's three cameras. Oh, there's an audience. I mean, I was really <laughs> Jen overcome. Says you won't cause when we see things, like you've been on NCIS before, Los Angeles, well, Bones, Los Angeles, Bones, Castle. When we see things on TV, it's all edited and put together, but it's very different oh, yes. when you're actually doing your shooting you scenes. The days are long. The days are very long. I mean, sometimes 14 hour days. Um, you're up early, in late. It's a lot of like, hurry up to slow down or slow down then hurry up yes. um, but it's the best job in the world I love 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 being an actor so that is your public life yes it is in your private life uh, where are some of all of our parts and you've yeah. decided to up until this point put some things down in a book because mm -hmm. of something that happened mm -hmm. in your life and that was uh, becoming a widow mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something we don't plan on. No, we certainly don't plan on uh, becoming a widow. And, um, you know, it was it's a life-changing experience, obviously. Um, and it left me with a lot of um, an opportunity to really sort of, I needed to draw on family. Yeah. I needed to find my strength to go forward because it's devastating. And the book really is about as you said, the sum of those parts yeah, that begin yeah. to kind of come together. And as you look to go forward, you also took time to reflect. To look back. And then going back to the, the how you actually met I your know, how I met Sado, yes. Um, I was a college exchange student. I was um, in Florence, Italy, mm -hmm. studying art. And I'm walking down the street with a friend, and I bumped into him. Did you know at that moment? Um, I was like, he's cute. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, this is cute. And he was oh, a chef like and was like, like, you oh, can cook for cute. me. This is yes. cute. And of course, he was like, it was love at first sight, you know, all this. Um, well, he did those romantic things. I, I'm taking telling her, her stories like a Hallmark like movie, right? <laughs> he stood in the rain. He for sure you. did. No, he was a remarkable, remarkable, remarkable man. And and in in at, in my early days of widowhood, looking back, I thought, wow, this life, this love we had was so incredibly magical. You know, and I wanted to keep that close. In some ways, writing the book was a, was a way to look back and sort of harness the beauty of that. And understand that it never goes away. Exactly. All right, you say he made love and action. Yes, he did. Yes, he did, in, in the small and big ways. Yeah. I mean, that, 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 the, the scene in the book where he stands in the rain. That's yeah, tell us about that scene. Oh my gosh. Well, so, okay, he worked late, mm -hmm. right, every night as a chef, and I was a college exchange student, and so I lived in an apartment with like a lot of girls, and the buzzer, you couldn't ring the buzzer after a certain hour, or like the person who we were subletting from would get mad. Like <laughs> the bell rang at like midnight, <laughs> right? Because you're waking everybody up. So we had a, a, a rule, when he got off work, he would um, wait downstairs, I would wake up, look out the window, see him, and I would let him in. Aww. Well, I fell asleep one night, hard, knocked out, like <laughs> snoring all of it. There you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and when I woke up, it was raining. And I thought, oh my God, there's no, there's just no way he's there. And I raced to the window, looked down, and he was standing in the rain. 
cut. Because that was a movie scene right there. Okay. Uh, so you started dating, then you realized that this was going to be a union. Mm -hmm. But you had to get through his family. Yeah, um, you know, he was born in Sicily. We met in Florence, but he was Sicilian. And, and you know, there was some family fracture already there between father, son, which is not an uncommon thing, mm -hmm. right? So by the time I came onto the scene, it was sort of like they could wrap their minds around all the ways their son was choosing a life that was so different than theirs, which included marrying someone who was not Italian, mm -hmm. who was American, black, Right, an actress. Well, Sicily's right by Africa. You could throw a stone. <laughs> Let's just do a history lesson right here. Hannibal came up on his mighty elephants and said, hello there, lovely lady. Yeah. All right, so there we go. There we go. Okay. So, so, you know, there was, and so there was an estrangement. And in fact, there was some rejection there initially of our union. You got married without his family. We got married without them being there. Yeah. yeah. But and there's so the something that brought you all together. Yes, yes, yes. And, um, you know, we, we began to do some repair work early on to kind of bridge that. And of course, when my daughter was born, um, when we adopted her, that became a, a change. And his diagnosis was an opportunity to sort of deepen our, yeah. our union. And as a family, we go on this gorgeous journey, right, from this sort of estrangement to the togetherness. And yeah. the book is really not so much about where we started, but it's about that arc, right, that we can all take as people. Right, and that diagnosis you talk about, that's the thing that just makes you realize how precious life is. Oh, absolutely. And so the diagnosis was? He was diagnosed with uh, lyomyosarcoma, which is a rare soft tissue cancer. And yeah. the lessons that you learned through that, that you felt you wanted mm. to share with other people, because there are thousands of people, if not mm. millions, who mm -hmm. are taking that journey mm -hmm. along with mm -hmm. you. And by the way, congratulations, New York Times bestselling. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we talked about before, before the show how you can write a book like this for your own therapy. Yes. And then all of a sudden you look up and you realize how it's therapy for so many other people as well. Yeah, I didn't know that in the specifics of, you know, one story, my story, would be the touch points to the universal story right? right because we are all going to go through big life-changing events and the way that we move through that who we hold close how we choose to forgive how we choose to love really becomes the quality of our life yeah right yeah I want you to to end with the dedication in your book if you can just read a little bit of that. oh absolutely I'm happy to there it is for Sato who lit the fire of love for our daughter Zoella, the eternal flame. 